Well, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Josh and I'm back again with another new video regarding installation of Fedora Workstation Live 32. So from the response of my last video, uh, some of my friends and also from the community overall, I got response regarding installation of Fedora Workstation 32. So it's it's been the most recommended because uh, of many professionals who are used to like rail systems and also CentOS systems but want to try something better than them. So here we go, uh, Fedora for you. So also I got some news that Fedora has changed their uh, installation setups like uh, the GUI of Anaconda installer. So let's deep dive into it and we shall see what waits ahead. So upon booting up the live USB, you should see something like this. I'm currently on my virtual box. So yeah, some you, to get into the BIOS, you will need to do some settings uh, specific to some certain motherboards and devices, which is obviously different for different computers itself. So just Google it out. And if you finally successfully be able to boot into the live environment, you should see a screen like this. So I will not test this media and start, but you should test this media and start Fedora Live Workstation. So I'm just going to start right away because I've tested that my media is correct. So I'm going to click on start. So here we go. Let's see what happens. Okay. That's just some warning of virtual box and it's our kernel buffer so it will give us some logs about what's going on and since it's a virtual box there are some issues with the display driver and thus uh, like some things might you might see some things fail but on reality nothing will fail uh, hopefully and um, on going to settings of the genome a genome settings I can change the display resolution so upon the first boot up you should see everything like messed up so let's just hope for the best so here we go we have booted and as I said my display is all like uh, very big so it's like super scaled it's actually not super scaled it's actually low resolution so let me just uh, give me just one minute to adjust the resolution Hmm. So suddenly my actual resolution is not here. So let me just go with the nearest uh, 16 to 9 resolution. Hopefully this resolution suits you. Uh, I mean, you will see it on a smaller screen. So smaller resolution might not hurt. I'm currently on 1920 by 1080 p display. So do that. So upon initial boot up, you should see something like this. So you need to click on like try Fedora or you can install directly. So I'm just going to try Fedora. It's a good thing about Linux distributions that it allows you to try your operating system before even installing. So that's something which is specific to Linux based distributions. Next, next up, you can see here, uh, let me just go into my settings real quick. Uh, let's click on about. You can see here it's the Fedora 32 workstation edition. I'm on a 64 bit computer and running Genome version 3.36, which is by default on uh, Fedora 32. And it's also running Wayland as its windowing system. So I'm on a virtual machine and that's why its graphics are like this. But by default, you will have like uh, Mesa drivers or something like that for Intel and for Nvidia, you will have like Nvidia something. So processor is Core i7 and I have allotted 4 gigs of RAM to this machine. It's really uh, not requirement based, but okay. So let's just not deep dive into the settings for now. So by default, Genome will have a, you know, not visually pleasing look. So you can customize it all. Uh, I will show you in my next video on how to customize your Genome desktop environment. Sorry for the background noises. I mean, here everyone is like screaming and shit. 
so um, what do we do next we install so before installing it let me just show you uh, let me just open disks utility so you can see i have given 54 gigs of space for my virtual hard drive you can see it's a vbox hard disk so i'll be installing it on it so let's just click on install like it's the option for installing to hard drive let's get started so it might take a minute it just scanning the system for the number of hard drives the partition tables and etc etc also like which processor i am processor blobs and everything else so it should huh yeah okay so it just started again now i am from india and since it's network connected so it just automatically selects hindi but i don't actually i uh, use hindi and i don't actually uh, speak hindi properly too um bengali by my mother tongue so let's click on english india and english us you can uh, english india and english us has literally no difference except the uh, currency symbol so i'm just going to go with english india let's just click on continue it should take one minute and since my computer is now network connected so you should automatically get your time zone and date but if you are not getting your time zone and date double check it uh, and just click on here okay so now we have like installation destination so click on here by default your hard drive will be selected if you are having two three or more than one hard drive it will be listed here which you on which hard drive you want to install just click on install so uh, for now i'm just going with automated installation so not diving deep into the custom methods like creating partitions and all so because that will make this video too long and like my viewers have requested that not to make videos too long so this is not a dual boot guide for dual booting it you need to make some changes to it like custom partitioning so if you want to check out the dual booting guide re uh, regarding partitioning do check out my other video on install dual booting ubuntu and windows 10 so without further further ado uh, let's get started with automated install so if you want you can like uh, encrypt data or make additional space available okay so let me just make additional space available uh, and let's click on next okay let's see so here's this okay mm, what's this ah what reclaim okay reclaim let's see reclaim hmm. okay so automated partition has done i think so let's click on begin installation So it started it will just uh, create uh, all the directories all the stuff and install everything else automatically so since i'm connected to internet maybe it's downloading something or no it's not downloading anything so your installation process is like fully offline so if you don't want to waste your internet connection or if you're on a limited internet plan you can disconnect at ease So not deeping, deep diving into the partitioning scheme, but will I will release a next video on partitioning, which on which I will deep dive into it. But uh, while it's installing, let me just give you a quick recap. You have like uh, mainly you need three partitions: a boot partition, a root partition, and a swap partition. Like uh, swap partition is optional actually, but I'm actually a big swap partition guy i mean i like to hibernate my devices rather than shutting it down because of like fast startup and also all the work is saved so if you are into that kind of stuff you need a swap partition which is like double or like 1.5 times your ram size so i'm a big fan of swap partition so i like swap partition a lot so for example i have like 16 gigs of ram you need a swap partition more than 16 gigs 17 gigs will also work 20 gigs will also work anything more than your ram 
so and, and the next one is which i discussed was uh, the, the second one actually is the root partition so in the root partition you actually whole system will be installed along with all your apps and all your everything else and boot partition is the partition which is required to which will be, will be recognized by your bios or your bootloader to just start up your system so and also your uh, grub bootloader uh, it will be installed in your bios partition uh, boot partition sorry my mistake so also uh, on efi partitions maybe uh, you need another type of uh, what do you say a partition like a vfat file system uh, which is like around what 500 meg size it will contain the efi system so that's it uh, some of you might not might be might not be familiar with this partitioning scheme so i will just create another new video some next time uh, with fedora itself uh, i'm not going to switch to any other uh, operating system for demo purposes right now so i'll just cut to the end once it's finished so hope for the best okay so now our installation is finished and i'm back again so as you can see here it will be written like complete and that means it's complete so now let's click on finish installation and and okay so it's done so now I, you are still in the virtual environment now don't think that you'll just be instantly uh, transferred to your main operating system so if you just want to check that what's the partitioning scheme made by uh, your fedora installer well, let's just open disk you can also use gparted but i'm not going to do that right now so it it created like one partition of 801 uh, gigs so i'm presuming that it is it is the boot partition yeah oh yeah, it's written here. It's Linux this image, Linux bootable. Okay. It created another partition which is a LVM2 physical volume. Now I have heard that from Fedora 33 or 34, uh, but they will start pushing ButterFS as the default file system. So let's just let's just see what happens. So 34 gigs of looper device. I think that's the root uh then oh no we have like what 49 gigs yeah it is the root okay so it's mounted at as root and also like this so it's for security reasons they like create logical volume so there's that now one thing which i forgot to mention on my previous video uh many of you who had commented might know that uh, and I told you that you should restart and you will just boot back into your operating system uh, during the dual boot time so that was not the case like you need to go back to your BIOS and set your primary boot device to your newly installed hard drive but since on this case we are not dual booting so it's just not uh, the case in here you you have like only one operating system in your computer and that's this Fedora system so just click on here like power off and so just click on power off and now pull out your usb bootable flash drive 
and everything will be good to go now since I am on a virtual machine uh, I'll just unmount the your what do you say uh, I'll just unmount on my Fedora live CD remove from virtual disk okay so this is the step where you just like remove your USB drive so let me just start again okay so I think Fedora is booting up just fine so what warning yeah so as you can see here Fedora is booting up just fine and since it's a virtual box a virtual machine sorry so my display is again like you know lower resolution I'll fix that in a minute after booting into the operating system sorry for the background noises anyway let's see okay so we have successfully booted into our system uh, why is the time and date not showing let me just what where is the setting what happened oh okay so they did this new thing like ah yeah how can I forget uh, so previously on like other operating systems when you install you need to give your root password and everything else so it didn't ask me for anything like that so this I think this was the new thing so now we need to set up all of it so it just created like an OEM install so let's just click on next now location and automatic reporting if you are like privacy concerned too much just uncheck all of that uncheck okay so next I'm not going to do any of it skip now name let's see uh, what force fans okay that will be username also we have like enterprise login option nice they have like fully incorporated it okay, so let's just give it a super strong password okay so let's click on next all done let's start using fedora and date time and everything might show up just about right now hmm wow it just freezed maybe it's just the VM thing yeah so you can see here everything is back again now some before diving in deep into any of it let me just change the resolution graphically not pleasing till now just set it to where was it okay so now I think it's visible so it gives you this nice cool uh, getting started page you can just like read everything if you want to start like how to browse the web how to do system search launching applications changing date time zones if you miss have mistaken previously using works windows and workspaces switching tasks uh, get to online accounts and whatnot so I just leave it for you to figure out now let's just see that what it has uh, done to our system from the insights so let me click on about mm, now everything just looks fine oh you can change your uh, device name like I will give it force okay so universal access users everything is just fine now you can change your automatic login now without unlocking this you cannot change anything so this is a must and there's default applications date and time and everything else so let me just open disks and show you what was the what let me just show you what was the partitioning scheme so we have like our root and our swap so by default it created a swap partition just bigger than our RAM you see this is the general convention I created like 4 gigs of uh, I, I allotted like 4 gigs of RAM for this VM so it created 4.3 gigs of uh, swap partition for the hibernate feature so it's a good thing that uh, Fedora by default allows this hibernate feature 
so this is also our this is our root file system which is like 42 gigs free out of 49 so it's what 7 gigs total for the whole system let's see what else do we have uh, all of this these are the files by default so as you can see the uh, looks aren't very much pleasing you can like go to your root directory and browse everything now on my next video I will show you how to uh, make it visually pleasing to for all like uh, let me just minimize it you can see this is my current desktop so I don't think that it's too much junk around here you can see I have customized it to my likings I have also patched around a cool blurry effect so I will show you everything else uh, how to do it and much more on my next video so hope you all liked it uh, like uh, push down the like button subscribe and also share it to the person in need uh, thanking you it's Jash and signing off